This stinks. Yep, it's that time of year again. As everybody knows, well, at least in the Northeast and other parts of the country, October, November rolls around and the camping season ends. <laughs> so for those of you new to the channel, I am Izzy, this is MJ. We are Endless RVing. The channel brings you the best in RV DIYs, product reviews, RV tours, and so much more. If you are new to the channel, we invite you to subscribe below. Hit the notification bell if you're back for another video. We thank you for joining us. So we know there's a million and one videos out there on YouTube for winterization. We've got a bunch of requests though for, for the endless RVing method of winterization, which you know we do a little different than some people. So we're gonna share that with you today. So MJ and I are gonna take you on a step-by-step -step how we winterize Nelly, who's behind us. So this is now our fourth time winterizing. We have done this on our travel trailer and now the motorhome. It works great. We've had no frozen lines, no leaks. So we're gonna continue it doing it the way we do it. What you're gonna to need to do this is probably about an hour of your time. You're gonna need an air compressor. It only has to go up to like 40 or 50 PSI. It doesn't have to be crazy. You're gonna need this little adapter here. Uh, this goes at the end of your compressor hose and then this will screw into the inlet of your uh, sewer flush as well as your fresh water inlet. And then finally, you are going to need RV specific antifreeze, very important. RV specific antifreeze. Do not put regular antifreeze in your lines because not only will you poison yourself, you will pollute the environment. So they sell this stuff. It's very cheap. It's about $2.50 a gallon at Walmart. And you're gonna, for us, I like to get four to five gallons. That way I have a little extra. So before you start, before you start blowing any air through there, you're going to want to empty a number of things. You want to empty your freshwater tank completely. You want to empty your hot water heater and you want to empty your low point drains. Also, what a really good thing to do is do a deep cleaning of your black tank so you make sure everything in there is clean. So the next step is you're going to connect your air compressor to your city water inlet. You're going to set that air compressor. We set it to 45 to 50 PSI. Whatever your rig requires, do that. It may be different for you. Then you're going to go throughout the coach and open wherever water is going to come out. You are going to let that come out until it starts coming out as a mist. So I'm going to start out here with the outdoor shower. Then I'm going to go inside. I'm going to do the bathroom sink. I'm going to do the shower. I'm going to do the kitchen sink and I'm going to do the washer dryer hookups. So anywhere that you have water coming out, you need to do that till the mist comes out. And guys, just remember to make sure that all your valves and your low point drains are closed so the system can be adequately pressurized and get all that water out. So now that you've uh, pushed air through the whole system and you're just getting mist, you're gonna wanna move on to running the RV antifreeze through the system. Just an FYI, when you're pushing the air through the system, do the same thing for the black tank flush. And the reason is because, at least on ours, the back of that flush, there's a line that runs fresh water into the black tank. You don't want any potential fresh water in there that could freeze and, and cause a leak in that line. So just push the air through and that should resolve that problem. Okay, so the second thing we do, we run the antifreeze through the system. And the reason why we do this is, although the air should get most of that fluid out, for what it costs to get five gallons, 10 bucks, in our opinion, is not worth the risk of potentially having a leak later. Our setup is makes it really easy for us. We have a siphoning tube. We're gonna put that right into the RV antifreeze. And then there's gonna be a series of valves here. This is all individual to your motorhome or RV, how these valves are set up. But basically what we're gonna do is set the valves up. I'm gonna turn the water pump on and this will start siphoning into our fresh water system, pressurizing that system. We're then gonna turn on each faucet the outdoor shower, the inside sink, the toilet, the ice maker, everything until pink fluid is coming out. Our motorhome is set up. The pump will shut off once the system is pressurized with the appropriate amount of pressure and either through air or through liquid. Right now it's liquid. So it has shut off. We've got about half a gallon in the system right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the cold water and I'm gonna run liquid until it turns pink. So it is pink. You're gonna start to see it to foam. If you look on the ground, there's like a, a foam. That's how you know that at least the cold water line now going to the outside shower is good. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing with the hot water system. Every faucet we have, we're gonna do the same exact thing. Hot, cold, hot, cold. So I'm gonna turn the hot on till it starts turning pink. It's pink. 
and now the outside shower is good. We're gonna show you one more example again if you're doing this for real, you're going to want to do everywhere water comes out from. But we're just going to do for the purpose of the video, the sink. We're going to go cold first. There's your mist and immediately you start to see that pink. So we're good on the cold. We're now going to do the hot mist pink. So now these lines are protected. Once you get all that done, every faucet is pink coming out. There's going to be one last thing you're going to want to do. This is what I do. You're going to take a couple fresh gallons of the RV antifreeze pour it down uh, the drain of every place that you have a faucet so down the kitchen drain bathroom drain down the toilet i also like to throw rv antifreeze into the black tank with a chemical because you always want fluid in there you don't want it to dry out but what the antifreeze will do it will just make it like a, a slush it won't allow that liquid to freeze do the same thing in your gray tank so guys it took us about usually takes us about five bottles of the antifreeze to work through the whole system. We're very generous with the amount, may not take you as much. Now, in order to dewinterize, the first thing you're gonna to want to do is turn on everything, make sure all that water's coming out clear, right? We don't want any pink left in that. Also, we highly recommend sanitizing your fresh water system. We did a video on that, we'll link that right above. So in the comments below, let us know how you winterize. You do anything differently than we do. If you don't need to winterize and you wanna just laugh at us because we need to, that's fine too. Too. Lucky you. <laughs> uh, if you found this video useful, feel free to share it. Guys, this is really easy to do. You don't have to pay an RV shop to do this. They're probably going to charge you a hundred bucks and it's literally $10 in material. I Under mean, an you're going to have to buy a compressor, but those are so cheap now. You can get a compressor for 30 bucks. Probably even rent one. This will pay for itself one yeah. time. Real easy to do. We hope this helped you out. If you like the video, hit the like button, the thumbs up button. To the left of us, we're gonna put our RV DIYs as well as our RV essential upgrades. And for myself and MJ, sadly, we had to winterize. We thank you guys for watching and we'll see, see you on you the, on the road. road.